What is up, YouTube? I'm back. So this is where we're at. A little rundown. We had a shit year. It was garbage. There was no hay. Well, it was cold spring. Nothing grew. No rain. No hay. None. I made 748 big bales last year through the through the cloths, which is on the other side of the tent. Um, I made 156 this year, both cuttings, and I didn't even get all of my second cut. Uh, we ended up chopping it for haylage, but that's to come next. So here's the problem. It's pretty empty. Today is December 21st uh, of the worst year ever, and uh, I'm going to show you what's been going on, and uh, yeah, so let's do it. We're mixing feed. Here we go. Oh my god, I'm shaking the camera. I ain't done this in forever. Okay, here we go. The old fucking 4020 doing her thing. Unreliable. Look at this old butler. Here's the deal with the butler. The butler, I didn't pay much for it, but anyway, it had an unloading apron. Right here. And the chain was bad, the gears were bad, the bearings were bad, and it's been patched like a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, I couldn't, uh, I could get the chain out of uh, Indiana, I think I talked to a guy. It was $500. This thing's not worth $500. So. I don't know if I can guess what they are, but those are the fins off the back of 411 Haybine. Your windrow fins. And we're mixing feet. Here we go. God, climb up here. I just started. So, my hay, my baler, has got a cutter in it. So, I'm able to do this. But you've got to be smart about it. See, there's no videos on this shit. So I'm gonna help you out. You can do this, but you gotta be smart. You gotta use your head. So I put uh, uh, two buckets of hay in here already. First, first, let it mix for a few minutes, five minutes, whatever. Then I put two buckets of corn silage. And what the corn silage will do is it'll help it'll pull them flakes apart. I mean, they're caught already. You see how long this hay is? under six inches. They're caught already through the baler, but the corn silage will actually yank it and pull the clumps apart and mix it in. This is what, we're not done yet, so we're going to let this mix another minute. If I don't die when I crawl off. Oh, there's the corn silage. The corn this year was four foot tall. I, no rain, no rain. The ears were great. It, it's, but it just didn't have no, you know, I'm not a grain farmer. So, we got a little bit of spoilage here. This is, I want to show you. That's my spoilage, unfortunately. Now, I didn't put nothing on this this year. No inoculant, no, I usually do salt. I just, it was rain was coming, I didn't have time. I threw the cover on it. And I have less spoilage, figure that out. Um, Okay, we're mixing feed. We'll walk over here, let her mix a minute. I'll show you the barn. I've been working on it. Now this barn is completely built out of coal lumber and rough cut. Like rough cut we made, rough cut we had made for us. Uh, and this is where it's at. I worked on it up until the snowstorm, which was the other day, and got these headers or beams or whatever the hell you want to call them. But anyway, this barn is crooked. But cows don't care if it's crooked. They don't care. The tin I got from a friend of mine, who he got from a guy he did some work for, he's a carpenter. I got enough tin to do this whole barn and pay $2,000 for it. That's enough said there. This, uh, 
All this stuff is called lumber. Mm -hmm. Everything. You go to your, I hate to even say it, but you go to your local hardware, like your uh, Lowe's or, I don't know if Home Depot does it. Lowe's does it here, Harrington's, and uh, it's twisted. Mm -hmm. But it ain't twisted now, you know. The poles, there's four grand worth of poles here. Every one of these poles was twisted. Every single one of them. Twisted, bent, whatever. Look at that one. Short, so I made them longer. It is what it is. They don't care. Look. You guys care if your barn's twisted? No, they don't care. So here's here's the girls. And the kids are all together until I get that bay done. Then the kids are going over there. This is what I do for stanchions or feed bunks or whatever the hell you want to call it. The curb's a foot tall, might be too tall. Got some blood on here, I cut some horns, don't freak out. Um, yeah, it might be too tall. They seem to be doing well with it. This board here I put here so the calves, because the calves uh, the calves will walk through. Hey, babe. Hey. Oh, yeah, you need salt. Okay. Uh, they'll walk. So what I do is I put that board so the big girls can stick their heads down, but the calves can't walk through. This board, you can see, oh, sorry, is different from that one. I raised the end up because the calves were doing this, but because the big cows push them around. This is the problem with feeding big cows with little cows. This is why I'm putting a barn up to do away with that. So, anyway, I got to get back to mixing. But, uh, yeah, so here's the barn. Concrete bunk, feed bunk, flat area, whatever you want to call it. I'm not, you know, technical. Inside where they're standing is concrete, 10 foot wide. That's the scrape alley. It goes down here. I go in down on that end. I come down here. Matter of fact, I'm going to scrape it out today because it's pretty nasty. Out here, I got some free concrete, about 10 yards. It wasn't enough. So this is going to be the manure storage or push-off area. Right now, it's I'm just pushing manure off. There's a pile there. There's, it's I just can't, you know. A couple things. The spreader don't have a tailgate on it so I go driving down the road with this stuff's pretty liquidy it's gonna be out the back so we're working on it but it's all in progress so anyway oh pretty red guys there's the old two plus two hanging on to the bale we're gonna hook it today because I have got to try and spread some manure we're gonna go back over here my tripod I left the thing to hook my tripod up on my coyote call so uh, I don't have it. I'm going to try and set you up someplace so you can see this. Now, I'm no, I have no nutritionist. I, you know, I grew up doing this stuff like everybody else. Back then, they didn't care. They mixed, it, they mixed feed together and made sure the cows eat it. I was, they never put any thought into it. <clears throat> now we're doing a little bit of, you know, oh man, ain't even a place for me to sit yet. silage down that's the point of the hay slow the rumen because they'll pass this stuff through so quick that uh, they won't absorb there's my firewood pile they won't absorb any of it we're gonna try and find you a place to sit here It'll be a lot easier with a tripod let's see if this one work or this one ah it's cold not a fan of winter anymore. I used to be. Until you get old and you gotta be in it all the time. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, oh, one more thing. This video is gonna be all messed up. One more thing. I do not have a defacer. There's lots of equipment to make your life easier. I do not have such. I'm gonna warm my hands up quick. So what I do to deface as I come in here like this, I use that corner of that bucket. And you want to keep, you want to use six inches of the face a day to stay ahead of the spoiler. At the most. So if I use less, I use less, whatever. So I just come in here like this and kind of scrape it off. Just sure I got a little hole there. I fix it. And uh, I kind of scrape it off the face. That's probably ready to go. So what I'm doing is three buckets of corn silage, three buckets of hay, and uh, 
I might throw a bucket of haylage in there, which the haylage is over there. The haylage is pretty dry, so it's almost like hay anyway. All right, let's see if we can get you back on this log here. It's going to be a screwed up video, sorry about that. I do not have the, the right equipment with me today. Let's see, how's that? You see everything? Perfect. Don't get sick, sorry. I gotta lose these gloves. Hold on a second. My hands are so messed. I can't do anything with freaking mittens on. Here we go. Oh. All right. The reason I want to emphasize it so much is like, this was really hard. You know, certainly get the damn wrong. Oh, that's ice. Uh, for me to figure out, I don't even know if I'm doing it right. Uh, the other thing is, this is not your normal TMR mixer. Okay, everybody's like, oh, you can't do that. It don't have blades in it. I was going to put blades in it on the order flight. I said, you know what, screw it. I'm going to try it without it. Um, look at that, track kernel. That's 
good to see. Anyway, so I'm gonna try it. So you got, you can do this, but you gotta be smart about it. You can't rush it. I feed every morning, and it takes me an hour. It takes me an hour. That's what it is. Before I get on doing anything else, but here I just want to show you mixing. That's three buckets of hay, three buckets of corn silage, or no. I think I gotta add another bucket yet. Yeah. Okay. I think. I don't know, we're gonna let it mix. I'll put the halogen in there. Also, the scales do not work on this wagon. Unfortunately, they are toast. I wish they did. So I'm flying, I'm doing fly by night. You know, I'm just doing what I think is right. You watch, I'm watching their manure. Uh, it's pretty pasty. Uh, at first, the first week of feeding, I uh, I had them like squirt guns. You don't want that. Which I know that, I just, you know, had to try it to figure out. I was putting way too much. Well, there was a, we ended up cutting a second cotton bale open. And I didn't want to do that initially, my father did it, which is fine, it's not a big deal. We ended up, so I was feeding second cotton hay with four buckets of corn silage and two buckets of hay lids. And it, they were like squirt on them. So what we're trying to do is firm, you know, without a nutritionist and a million dollar investment and a TMR, I'm trying to get all I can out of the feed I have. So, and right now the manure looks good. So, just, you can see this change. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's changing. Here, there's a Timothy head right there. That's what you want to see. Now this stuff, what I noticed with this, is like you, I give them corn silage. The first day I put them in the barn, okay? Gave them corn silage. I had tons of waste. In, uh, in the bunk. Because the biggest thing with feeding is bunk management. You know, you want to give them enough that they eat and they don't eat it if they, uh, an old timer I work with, he's like, if I went in the morning and the bunk was empty, I wasn't feeding enough. If I went in in the morning and the bunk was full, I was feeding too much. That's all it is. Very simple. So like, I already scraped mine up, but like I get a fine coat of this stuff. Like, I like they just leave just a little bit. I got a tune just for that. To me, that's good. Because I push it up and let the calves eat it or refeed it. I'll uh, remix it. But I really want to show everybody this because nobody's done this. It's all... You know, I'm going to explain it to you how I understand it. It could be wrong. It could be wrong. You see how that's changing? Look at that. Now the hay will, I mean, the hay will slow the rumen down. So they will get more, they absorb more energy and protein out of the grain if you slow down the rumen. People say you can't do this with auger wagons. If your bales are cut, you can do it. See, I make my own bales. I know exactly what I'm feeding and how I'm making it. She drones a drush. You just gotta let her mix. The biggest thing with doing this with an auger wagon is let it mix. Don't dump a bunch of stuff in it all at once. great to me. I think we're going to put our halos in. I think I think I need another bucket. Corn For some reason, the count escapes me. I'm pretty sure I said two, but I think I need it. looks like I need another one. Alright. Okay, next we're going to do the halos. Okay, I'm going to get down without breaking my neck. Try this. I don't have no fancy skid steer mount camera mount. Oh. I don't think it'll work. It's not gonna work. Hold on, I gotta put you back on the track. 
tree on the log. Back on the log. How's that? Turn you a little bit.
That's better. I kind of judge it off this hole in the back and how big it is from where the stuff is falling. Again, it don't have any scales. I mean, it has scales, they don't work. So here you go. Now what I noticed with this stuff, when I was, like I was saying, I fed straight corn silage. And, uh, let me turn you around, you can look at my beautiful face. I fed straight corn silage. And there was a lot of waste in the morning. I, that's what I always fed it like. I'd give them a bale of hay and straight feet, straight corn silage. But now, you know, I dug this mixer out and I'm like, I'm going to try this. So I'm 100% happy with what's going on now. The cows are getting bigger. They're still a little thin on the back, on the hind. I, I get that boniness in them. And they're beef cows. I just don't know why. I'm pretty sure they're lacking some kind of protein. And I got an idea for a mineral feeder that's going to happen. I'm going to try and work on that today. I've been feeding mineral blocks. I've always fed blocks. But I, I inquired a little bit on Facebook and actually a couple of good guys, uh, one of them from Germany, I believe, uh, kind of gave me the 411 on the ration and what I should be doing. And another guy suggested lots of mineral. I told him I used block. He said we, we should switch to loose. So I'm going to make a feeder. Something that hopefully the bull won't destroy. Well, she's penned up right now anyway, because the heifers are in with the mothers, and I can't, I can't have babies having babies. So, yeah, just nobody ever talks about this. So this is what I came up with. I've been working on this for, well, the barn's been a two-year project. Getting me to this spot right here where I'm at right now, that's, oh my God, I'm holding the camera down. You're looking at my chin. That's been also multiple years. I'm extremely pleased with my outcome. I'd love to have a big TMR with scales and where I could just dump it in and do it all by the pound. Uh, uh, just not going to happen. It's not going to happen this year. We've had a terrible, terrible year. I have zero hay to sell. I had to feed all of it. I sold, well, okay, I sold a little bit of it. Maybe 10%. And that's no joke. But I've had to feed a lot of it. So no hay to sell means no income. And that's where we're at. Man, that just, that looks good to me. All right, I'm going to try and do this. It's good and mixed. It's good and mixed. This is the consistency I like. It almost looks like furry corn silage. <laughs> Let's try and feed it. I don't know if I can do it with a camera. Oh, yeah. I can try.
gonna come down here and spread this out. There we go. Rock. Sorry about my language. You get old, you get grumpy. So if I put poly on this, it would probably slide off a lot better. I just haven't done it yet, or come across it. Do it. That is GMR mix in a auger wagon. Do not tell me it can't be done. Okay. Hey everybody, let's uh, park the track and I'll show you something else. Okay? These things, block heaters, right? Block heaters, lead cores burn barns down. I don't care what you say, they're fuses. So, this little bugger, Lowe's. Um, oh, my vines are out of control right now. The snow is pulling down on this one. See, this is the stuff you gotta watch. Um, little timer, I put it, set it for the morning. Block heaters turn on, warm up block heaters turn off I don't leave machines plugged in all night I don't believe in it you will burn your barn down eventually all right so before I push this up what I noticed when they were eating you know again separate corn silage hay separately they pick I still got a couple of them that'll nose around you gotta watch them but most of them, if you look, let's see if I can get one to eat. They're like, why are you videotaping us? Okay. Come on, somebody take a bite. If you watch them eat, this is what I do. Come on. See that? See that right there? That's mouthfuls. They don't pick. No nosing, no scurrying around, pushing stuff around. They take mouthfuls. So that's how I know <laughs> that they like it. I gotta push it up. See this one? I can't reach it. And they're waiting patiently. 
Uh, yeah, so that's about it for this one. Got some Amazon special solar powered, solar powered lights. So in the, uh, you know, so what I do is like I feed during the day. I was feeding at night too. And the problem is it gets dark and then there's no, that's the only lights I have and they get pushing around in here and it's just not good. So I'll feed them in the morning. I put that much down, sometimes a little more. It all depends. If it's real cold, obviously, if it's real cold out, they're going to use a lot more energy to stay warm. That's the point of feeding in barns and stuff like that. That's what to cut back on their energy use so they consume less feed more efficiently. Okay, so I'll feed this. I'll come back here at mm, three, four o'clock. Well, I'm always here, but I come check out at noontime, check the bunk, see where they're at, what they're doing. Mouthfuls. I love watching them just eat. It's pretty satisfying. Uh, see what they're doing, make sure they're good. I will come back at three, four o'clock, depending on what I'm doing. Whenever I can get here, sometimes it's dark, hence the lights. And I will push up what's left here. And they will finish it overnight. And by morning, the bunk's pretty much empty. And I get like a half a bucket that I push down there. And the kids pick through it. And then uh, at every two days, I two or three days, depending, I will scoop that out and get rid of it. And goes on the manure spreader. And that's it. So this is what we're doing. There is water in here. I got uh, waters in. There's one in this bay. Uh, these waters are not in. The one in the back is still there. That's in. Um, yeah. Oh, we're just gonna keep working on it. We didn't get that snow last weekend. I think it was last weekend. Whatever day it was, I'd uh, I'd have had this other section done. And I'm just waiting for the sawmill to finish up. My two buys, because then I tie it into that building, finish this section. But this one here, I believe, is going to be for the youngins. I'm going to either buy another water, if I can afford it, which is pretty tough right now, or I'm going to take the blue one out of the back and put it between these two. That way, if I finish, if I can use these two. So these two bays have water, these two bays have water. Uh, the idea of this is to separate them by age and size so that the little cows can grow just as good as the big ones. They're just, you know, they don't, there's no competition. That's the problem with feeding together is competition. I don't care what you do. If you put a bale out in the middle of that pasture, they will beat each other until the pecking order is, is, is shown and the, the big cows will eat and the little ones won't. I still have two that I have to make sure have to eat. One of them is actually eating right now. It's that little the one with the red head and the white on her forehead. Not the black one when it's head up the other one. Her mother died back in the fall. Uh, she was an old cow. Um, I was still feeding bales over the fence. I put a bale over the fence. She was fine. They were eating. I put two bales over the fence. They were fine, they were eating, I came back next morning, calf was hollering. And when I hear calves hollering like that, you can just tell if you're around these things enough. So I went looking, I found mom. Um, I don't know, I don't know what happened to her. Could have been old age, she was an old cow. She seemed fine, but anyway, such is life. Such is life. Gotta keep moving forward. Okay. I've gotten some new subscribers in the past couple months. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming. Uh, you know, I just get busy. I got kids and life and, you know, work. Work, work, work. But uh, thanks for watching. I'm supposed to tell you to comment, rate, and subscribe. Uh, if you haven't, please do. I appreciate it. Uh, click that uh, bell, whatever corner of the screen it's in. Uh, support my channel. I don't. I don't do this for money. I try to help, you know, because nobody really, you know, explain things so people like me can understand them. 
I guess. I don't know. I'm just rambling. Comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks.